Good morning, folks. Goodbye, Voyager 1. Exheliospheric particle counts beginning to drown out those from our star. Slightly closer to home, evidence suggests Mars once had a vastly oxygen-rich atmosphere. You'll not want to skip that link in the list today. Closer to home still, Iris has reached orbit, set to give us the best interface coronal images we've ever had. I'm excited, NASA. Come on. Let's see them. Let's stay in orbit for a moment and just turn around to catch a glimpse of fires burning in northern Australia. It's a pretty sight amidst the swirling vibrance of the coastline. Let's hit the ground running. Drought look shows much of what we've seen all year, a shift west from last year's drought. Remember that a high pressure cell will settle in here today for a few, ramping temps to 120 and as I told you yesterday, maybe close to 130 degrees Fahrenheit on Saturday. This is getting too global warming-y for my taste, so let me remind you that precipitation records are thumping everything. It's not close. Another terrific stat is that cold records are beating heat records so far this year, which is a far cry from the line below comparing where we were as of last year. Buoy in event mode usually cause for a bit of concern, but this deviation appears to be inches only. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center called number six in the Western Pacific. Philippine umbrella sales are skyrocketing, and oh, by the way, Hong Kong is in the direct predicted landfall pathway. Still got a weakening tropical storm in the Eastern Pacific, unlikely to really do much going forward, however. We'll focus on that low stuck beneath Alaska, now losing power as she integrates more and more air and her pressure rises. It's a good trend, coming back to pressure to reveal the lows in the northeast, putting a strong counterclockwise drive on the surface air, and indeed, expected to fire storms along that southwest swinging convergence tail. New York and New Jersey will likely break their June rain records tonight. Four gamma ray bursts in three days. Last two happened as yesterday's news was uploading out of Centaurus and the Southern Cross. Bartol shows a decrease in cosmic rays overall, and what an excellent demonstration of the CME magnetic shielding effect. We took a significant interplanetary shock at 1400 UTC yesterday with speed and plasma temperature peaking immediately and bulk proton mass following. The cosmic rays went down because Earth was shielded in a cloud of solar plasma. The Aurora Borealis and Auroras Australis lit up immediately. So far, we see geomagnetic instability building and some flux on the GOES electrons. Combine those with an eye on the umbral field. Still closed, but worth monitoring to track coronal hole influence. Something interesting. Got a few sunspots. None look terribly dangerous. Perhaps the new ones on the north and turning in on the south can grow up quickly and gain magnetic complexity. But yet, just as a seemingly benign alpha region popped M2 a week ago, she came close again moments ago with a C7 double peaked flare that indeed released a significant CME. And shocker, I disagree with NASA on its track. Now the left panel of the endless spiral isn't really helpful here, so we'll come to the right, and if you'll remember Space Weather 101, I'll flip this the right way. NASA believes the CME will miss south and slightly right, or ahead of our orbit. Which makes sense since it came off the south right of center disk as it faces Earth. So okay, yeah, that might make sense, unless you've actually looked at the satellite feed. Soho Lasco C3 images reveal plasma going left and even north of the solar equator. Faintly visible, same thing on the other side as well. This again was a wide blast CME and not a confined coil. I bet we get a glancing blow. I got close-ups of that eruption and dancing plasma on our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.